time. The Daily Graphic this morning says President Hill's graphic for living up to mandate uh, tests for core FS efficacy over COVID 2019. There's a manufacturer appeals to government. That's Professor Samuel Atu Duncan, Executive Director of Core. And uh, don't leave Galamse fight to politicians alone, Apostle Nyamiche tells. Ghanaians. President orders no travel for public officials measure to prevent COVID 2019. Cocoa board farmers uh, supplies, uh, supplies farmers with prunes. The Ghanaian Times COVID 2019. President suspends foreign travel for public officials. Introduction of universal QR code. Ghana pushing towards cashless state vice president. Business Development Minister uh, Ministry announces 10 million Ghana cities package for 10,000 youth in the northern Ghana and will export $1 billion of horticultural produce to EU market in six years, according to the Agric Minister who yesterday spoke with the, met with the press at the Media Press Series Daily Guide. JB's ghost <clears throat> chasing me suspect, uh, Sexy Dondon says, Ghana's food security improves judgment day for ex NCA board members and uh, president bans foreign travels over coronavirus. They find a newspaper president suspends all official travels as an additional measure to prevent coronavirus. Dr. Wa urges North in Ghana to give Nanado four more years and calls for immediate fuel price reductions misplaced premature according to Hassan Tampoli. He's the boss at the National Petroleum Authority and Kukubaku endorses Dr. Sibei Boa for new job and, and a happy birthday to our own Daniel Achuziokli here at TV3. It's your birthday today. Also, Mr. P. S. K. Atta Ahin, immediate past uh, chairman of the St. Peter's Methodist Church Men's Fellowship at Odoko. Happy birthday to you, sir. And if it's yours as well, happy birthday. My guest this morning, Dr. Ahmed Chinapohe is the a senior lecturer at the University of Education in Winneba. Also, Mr. Alex Sebeftiev is a former minister and former uh, chief of staff as well. And also, Honorable Andrew Ejapa Mesa. He's the member of parliament for the second D constituency. And hopefully, he wants to go back to parliament to represent his people. We wish him well in that endeavor. Gentlemen, good morning. Thank you for your time. Good morning. morning. Okay. Yesterday, Mani Ghana uh, rehashed what they've been telling us over and over again. And they consistently are saying that the Electoral Commission lied. And this will be the, the final time they'll be speaking out. But they will put up some other processes to, um, if you will, press down their, their, their points. As they've said, they mentioned that they, there were inconsistencies in the tendering. The amounts that were being quoted by the Electoral Commission was not correct. And in fact, the credibility of the vendor and all of that. This has become perhaps one too many, somebody will say. But are they making a legitimate point that we must listen to? Well, good morning. Uh, good morning to my colleague panelists and to our church viewers, particularly those in my consulate second day. Increasingly, I'm beginning to get disappointed with the money. Why so? Because um, they've made the point. The EC have come to debunk some of the allegations that they've made. Mm -hmm. And they're still out rehashing, mm -hmm. essentially mm -hmm. repeating all the arguments that it made before and all the allegations that they put across. You see, if our constitutional bodies are supposed to work, then like Mr. Mahama indicated to all of us in 2016, mm -hmm. we should allow them to work. Civil society organizations have a role to play. Okay. But if you are seen to want to constitute yourself as the decision-making body, mm -hmm. as the constitutionally mandated body, such that if your views are not the ones that are being carried through, then the process should not go on. Then it moves to the realm of disappointment. Is it as simple as that? They are, they are raising figures and questions. For example, See, they say that in 2016... No, hold on. Hold Tony, on. Uh, 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 we've, we've all heard the Imani argument. Okay. And we've all heard the EC argument. So which one should we accept? They say in 2016... No, I'm asking you a question. They re, I don't if answer it, questions. I, I know you don't, but yes. it's important. Which of these two assertions mm. should we take? I want to know. 
Imanis. And if we don't take Imanis, then all hell must break loose. To the point where they even suggest mm -hmm. that proceeding with the EC route will lead to violence of sorts in the 2020 general election. Basis being what? They are my very good friends, so I'm constrained. Mm. <laughs> oh, yes. The and I respect the, the work that they do. The no, truth no. is the truth. Truth is, I don't speak for the EC. All right. But I was in Parliament when <coughs> the case was made. Mm. I was not at the committee meeting, but I read the Special Budget Committee report. And I'm saying that, look, if two parties are going into a contest, mm -hmm. and in this case, I'm not using MPP and NDC, ordinary contest, before you start the game, the referee says that, look, all the equipment, all the tools that I'm going to use to conduct or referee the game, mm -hmm. I, the referee, cannot rely on it. How do we go into that contest? They, so their claim... No, I want to know. How? Uh, uh, allow me. Their claim is that in 2016, we refreshed 7,500 7, BVRs and bought 40,000 more v BVDs at the cost of several millions. In 2018, we bought another 2,000 pieces of BVRs and more BVDs, also for millions of dollars. And now in 2020, we want to spend $72 million buying a new a brand new system and they are actually faulting the look, special budget committee in look, parliament you see, for not being no, able on, to speak on, to the ec on this matter. you see the ec has indicated that because that was the only system that was available okay okay and some of the equipment had been damaged mm. they needed to replace them now the referendum that they conducted and mm -hmm. the district level elections that they con mm -hmm. conducted mm -hmm. only last year mm -hmm. was not mm -hmm on the magnitude of the general election. So they could manage equipment and the systems by the replacement that they made. Was that why they easy said That's, the system no, is credible? Hold on. Oh, no, they, they said the election mm. was credible. And the election is not only activities that are conducted on an election day. Mm. Okay? It's an entire process culminating in the vote mm. and the counting and declaration of results. Mm -hmm. So if they say that the election and the referendum and the um, um, district level elections mm. was successful. How many people voted? What was the voter turnout? And it doesn't impact the, the, the capacity of the systems. But Johnny, like I said, significantly, mm. if the referee has told everybody that my systems are unreliable, should we go into the contest? This news knowing, is listen, listen, knowing the kind of political environment that we find ourselves in. Okay. I get scared. Yet, we say, oh, it's too expensive. Ah, but we had a voters register in 2000, 1992. We changed it mm -hmm. for good reason. Did it come for free? We subsequently changed it in 2004. It was expensive, mm -hmm. but for good reason. Was it for free? In 2012, we changed the register yet again. It was expensive, but for good reason. It wasn't for free. So what has changed? The, it, when, look, for me, look, mm -hmm. the back and forth arguments. Okay. Okay. Like I said, the EC has debunked almost all the assertions that Imani has what, made. What, no, what, no, what, no, let what, me, what, you what, let me finish okay, and then you okay. can, mm -hmm. you can ask me a follow up question. And I'm saying that, look, per their manufacturers letters that they have, mm -hmm. and I've seen some email that is being circulated or bandied about. Right. Suggesting that that is an official document coming from the manufacturer. You doubt that? You, you believe in that? You doubt that? You, you sitting here. You doubt that? Smart Johnny Hughes. You doubt that? Don't patronize if me. If you want to <laughs> rely on a document, it's not a document that is on an official letterhead of the entity. Email. Who can create an email address? Who? Knowing the mischief that our friends can put across. Okay. Let me so you see me. I'm saying that mm. my my only duty mm. to this country, based on which I support the electoral commission, mm. is to ask both parties whether they would accept the outcome of a result that the electoral commissioner has says.
has said my systems cannot support. The Electoral Commission, this is want to risk it. This same Electoral Commission said that since 2011, no new uh, equipment has been procured. Now, Imani says records from the finance ministry that's, and that's, from, that's not true from because, Parliament. Look, look, from Parliament says no. that 2016, 2018, but, they spent money. But that information uh, itself that was in, and the, in the special asking, budget report where are those came from the Electoral Commission. Right. So it cannot be true that the Electoral Commission has said mm. that no new equipment have been procured. Okay. Because those responses mm. that they provided at the Special Budget Committee mm. was as a result of the committee's interest in finding out why they need for us to do a new register. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Sigmafia, sorry about that. Uh, Imani is at it again. And this time they are bringing out fresh detail, as they say. And they say, look, the Electoral Commission lied and that they are leading us the wrong way. And if we don't take care... We may be in a quagmire that is more mired than what we may be assuming. What do you say? Um, good morning to yourself and my colleagues and all our viewers and listeners. Um, I think that uh, we are very, in a very unfortunate position Why do you with say the Electra Commission. Mm. <coughs> because incre increasingly, mm -hmm. their credibility is being put on the line. Imani put out facts. If the facts are wrong, come out and say so. Every time facts are put forward, the goalpost seems to be changing. First, it was that we, the biometric system we have is not the best. We should have facial recognition. And therefore, the facial recognition became a big issue. Only for us to go into the facts and realize that the facial recognition they are talking about is actually less reliable than the fingerprint record. So you're not adding anything better to the system. Mm -hmm. Then it came out that no, actually the equipment is not good. It's not good enough. And facts have come out to show that the equipment is not obsolete. Mm -hmm. It is valid. You say you have a report that says, it is, they say produce the report. You don't produce it. Mm -hmm. We have brought a letter. Somebody is here saying that it's, a, it's not official. Did you get the letter from the official source? It was, no, questions were asked. We wrote, or people wrote to the company, and those were the responses. He says that anybody can create an email. So bring your report to show that what is there is not the fact. These are not obsolete equipment. Imani has now come out, brought you facts. Again, so much was spent on equipment 2016, 2017. A certain amount of money. Mm. Fine. Is this true or not? Let's put all the noise aside. Is it true that this amount of money was spent? And do we have this new equipment, mm. which was bought in 2017, which is now all of a sudden become obsolete, although it was used for a nationwide district uh, assembly elections. It was used for a nationwide district assembly elections right. in December. Put that aside. They look at the procurement processes. It's, it's, it smells. That's how I put it. It's not, it's, there are so many things about it that are just not right. They are pointed out. Nobody can give us any clear answers as to why, what exactly. Put that aside. You're being told that the timing, your time is not enough to do this process. And we are told by ECOWAS and other countries that mm. don't tamper with your any electoral process at the very least six months to an election. And it is best to bring in a system and test it on mundane elections and not general elections. Mm. So this would have been best put in place before, say, a district assembly election yeah, right. or at the referendum point where any issues would have been ironed out before we get to a general election. We've done this before. As he said in 2012, we had problems. It went into two days of voting. Mm. We couldn't, the, the machines got heated, things happened. So there were problems even in 2012. Right. Let's look at the historical context. It was right. their think tank in 2011, 2012, which insisted that we should do biometric. Okay. Because, and this was under the Dankwa uh, Institute, Dankwa which is that we should do biometric because once we do biometric, we will not need to do. Uh, a re-registration process again mm. because biometric data is intact. This, it was they who brought it. We even told them at the time that time was, we must do it. And because they were in opposition and we wanted peace, 
but we started in 2011. Mm. All the procurement processes and everything were done in 2011. It was in 2012 that we actually did, the, and we still had problems. The EC says the, the register is not credible. I, I, they are the referee. Uh, we cannot hold the elections with, with these uh, things. But, so we need new ones. And, but we've asked, why can't you? And the, the facts you are bringing out don't tally. But it, it's not even saying that you cannot refurbish. Mm. The argument was that if we even refurbish, it is going to cost us more to refurbish than if we get a new process. That has million. also been debunked. That has also been debunked. Because the amount of money, money you've already spent on the new equipment in 2016, to refurbish what is left will cost you 15 million. You are bringing in a new equipment. You said it was 74 million. Right. When they checked, we were looking at close to, uh, what's it called? 100 and something million. By the time you put contingencies in, it's another 150 million. Mm -hmm. So technically, we are going to spend almost 130 million for no reason. All we are saying is prove to us, black and white in paper, why you are doing this. Someone says he and even has a preferred vendor which is why they are speaking that, that strongly. Is, that, that is totally inaccurate. And even if that is the case, show us, show us the tender process. You went so sourcing. Mm. So there's not... And the person, people you picked, there are question marks on them. And the whole process of certain aspects which went through tender processes also had question marks. No. Look, put all that aside, as I said. We are in March. We are going to start voting 7th of December. Right. Are we serious? Is the EC telling us that they'll get everything right? And Imani said it could deteriorate. The situation could. Mm -hmm. Not that it would. It could. There's a big difference. Possibility. There's a possibility. And the kind of heightened tensions we, we have going into these elections, what, what is the issue? You cannot, you cannot refurbish for 15 million equipment so that we just use the same... Uh, uh, cards. Mm. When this argument started, the fact, fact was, oh, we will do a completely new registration and we are not going to let people use their old cards. Then it was watered down. Oh, now you can use your old uh, uh, voter's ID card to demonstrate that you are. If you can use your old uh, voter's ID card and uh, people have them already in the system, get a system that, um, a machinery that to deal with it. And why do we, because part of the cost is the new registration process. Well, well the NDC, for example, like Bobo is asking, accept uh, election results from if the EC decides, okay, everybody says, don't do a new register. Imani says so. You are saying so. So we are not doing a new register. Would the NDC accept results from uh, this present uh, system that the EC said is obsolete, they can't go into war with? Would the NDC accept the results? I will turn the question on you. Since 1992 to date, which results haven't we accepted? Our presidents have even called in and declared that considered defeat. Mm. Since when has Nana Adu ever considered defeat? That question is for MPP, not for us. We have always complied mm. and accepted the results. Twice, Nana had the opportunity to call and say, I'm conceding. He never did. He took us to court for eight months. This question is not for us. It's for MPP. Doc, stepping <coughs> for me, uh, you've heard the arguments. What do, you, what do you think from where you sit to get a new one or not? Well, I don't think the question is whether to get a new one or not. If you listen to Imani and I listen to Honorable uh, Sebefia and uh, my brother Ejapa, it boils down to the issue of uh, we being cautious in terms of having what a successful election. Mm -hmm. Because Imani is saying that looking at the time mm -hmm. and looking at the costs, right. if we are not careful, what is going to happen is that our election in December 7th is going to be, have a problem. Okay. And I think that is the same concern that uh, uh, Honorable Sebefia is raising. But you listen to uh, 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 and, uh, MP. Mm. MP say, look, it's not about whether we should have a register or not to have a register. But at the end of the day, the electoral commission that is conducting the election is saying that the machines that I'm going to use are machines that if we use them, the election is not going to be successful. But they have been questioned. I agree. They don't I, have, they I are agree. not presented. The bottom line parts. is that mm. both parties, and when I say parties, depending on which side of the pendulum that you swing to right. when it comes to this argument, all that they are saying is that, look, we need to have a credible election. Right. But this is the way that we need to go. Some want us to keep the old register. Others want us to have what? A, a new register. 
So, for me as a Ghanaian, mm. all I'm interested in is, will we have a successful election? Will the election in December 7th be a successful one? One that mm. at least gives each and everyone the opportunity to register. Has the Electoral Commission answered that question for you? Well, I, I, I think uh, there, are, there are some concerns. I think Mushan, there are some concerns. Tell me, tell me. And those concerns are those that have been raised by uh, like agencies like Imani. Because Imani is making some argument in terms of providing I mean, data to support mm -hmm. the argument. That being, for instance, recently, uh, one of the arguments that they are making is that this uh, company that is being contracted to, okay. to, to, to conduct uh, whatever it is Tells. has some mm -hmm. kind of credibility issues that uh, they are worried about. Right. Uh, they've also raised concerns relative to the cost of uh, the whole project. Mm. And I think these are issues that uh, the Electoral Commission has a responsibility to, what, to speak to, whether what they are saying is true or not. But I think at the end of the day, uh, Johnny, we are not in normal times. When, how do you when mean? I, I mean, look, look at the front pages of the, the, the major newspapers. Mm -hmm. President bans uh, public travels. Right. <laughs> Coronavirus. <laughs> Coronavirus. The you know, all these needs to be factored. You go to countries like Italy, most of their public uh, institutions are shut down, schools are shut down. God forbid, can you imagine if we are hit with this, uh, th coronavirus. this, this coronavirus, how is it going to affect our registration in April? You know, these are all issues that we need to be looking at. So I think uh, we need to, uh, to, to let uh, tempest come down. Uh, at the end of the day, both parties are looking at how are we going to have a credible one mm. election. And... I think the Electoral Commission needs to, not to take an entrenched position, uh, but to, to reassure uh, the different parties that, look, what we are doing is very, very necessary, mm. uh, is needed, and we need to do it, and we believe that when it is done, mm. we are going to have a credible election. The, the NDC has consistently said, and in fact, Imani repeated that point, that mm. the level of consultation didn't, didn't go down well. And one would have expected that, for example, the Committee of Eminent Persons and IPAC would have taken center stage in this, and the National Peace Council to, to ensure that these differences Johnny, are let's, let, let's be honest with ourselves. Mm. If you look at the, the dialogue that has surrounded this whole activity, you, you, you can run away from the fact that the different parties have taken entrenched positions. There's no doubt about it. Mm. And there seems to be some level of mistrust. It boils down to trust. I think there's something that the parties are not telling us openly. Okay. There's an, uh, under, uh, uh, there, there's a covert, a covert interest, interest and covert mm. suspicion, you know, that is not coming out. Because if, if look, we are talking of an election that, uh, an election where the Electoral Commission is saying, look, the machines have problems. And if we are using these machines, those machines will not be effective. Without proof. Mm. No, I'm just, I'm just right. giving the Electoral Commission the benefit of that. Then why should the NDC be worried? You understand? And if the reverse is the case, okay. that the machines do not have any problem, the voter register is not bloated or mm. does not have any problem, then why do you want to do a new register? So if you look at the arguments that are being put out there by both parties, I doubt if there will be any consensus. It, it does appear that for every major election, we seem to want to compile a new register. Well, because that call has always been from the opposition. Look at since 1992. Any time that there's a call for a new register, it's always come from the opposition because the opposition always do not trust the system. But in this particular instance, the irony is that the opposition is rather calling for what? The maintenance of their register. You, 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 what you does get that point. say to you? It, <laughs> that's why I said we are not in normal times. Hmm. We are not in normal times. They're, they're, unless somebody who happens to be very, very close to the powers that be, okay. and when I say powers that be, the, the different political parties okay. will be able to honestly tell us what okay. exactly Bobo, the, the is there is. is there a hidden interest that you're not telling us? I'll ask Mr. Sibi if you had the same question. Is there a hidden interest that Stock seeks to suggest well, that, look, there's some, something more that, that meets the eye? Well, as far as I know, and as far as the MPP is concerned, there is no hidden agenda. Mm. Indeed, it was in this studio, this very studio, that my very good friend, Felix mm -hmm. Ofo mm -hmm. indicated to the whole world that they are a resourceful party. And so they can mobilize their support base 
they can mobilize their resources to, uh, as it were, uh, participate in the process. Mm. I would have thought that their energies would be channeled in there. But they should rather be telling us why they insist that by all means it has to be the 2012 register or there would be chaos and violence. Doc says, not it, the, it, this is not see, normal for the party in opposition to say, let's keep the old register because the practice has been opposition calls for a new register. <laughs> Interesting. So, so if it's not coming from the NDC and is the electoral commission that is saying that my manufacturers have indicated to me that my equipment are at end of life. And I have a copy of the report here. Okay. You see, it wasn't a majority report, though. Mm. Johnny, it wasn't. In Parliament. It wasn't. And if you permit me, I'll read the concluding section. Okay. Because typically, if a parliamentary committee report is opposed to all the proceedings, mm. <clears throat> is not supported by the minority, then it will indicate that by a majority decision, mm. it's recommended. The conclusion. The committee, having carefully scrutinized the estimates of the Electoral Commission, is convinced that the collation, the allocation is not sufficient mm -hmm. for the operations and services of the Commission for the <coughs> 2020 financial year and also for the conduct of the 2020 presidential and parliamentary elections. Mm -hmm. The committee was encouraging urgent steps to be taken by the Minister of Finance and Government to provide additional resources mm -hmm. to meet the needs of the Electoral Commission wish to recommend to the House to adopt its report and approve the sum of one billion and so much for the implementation of the program of the Electoral Commission for the 2020 financial year. So question is this. Why did the NDC members of the Special Budget Committee mm. who sat in the proceedings with the EC did not raise their voice there but when they came to the plenary they decided that they were going to boycott. What do you see? It's a pattern. Pointing you back. recall the amendment to the National Identification Act. Mm. You recall the comments during the debate that members of the NDC made, mm. including my very good friend, Amma Kofibua and Mahama Yarega, mm. in support. The following day, the party leadership came to parliament. They changed their mind. Only a Same pattern. You see, look, look. If you'll be honest with the people of Ghana and be truthful as to why they did not speak at the committee but decided to boycott when the report came out that some people saw the content. That's when they say, hey, you people have gone to sit in committee and agreed and recommending that we do a new voters register. We, the party, don't support it. Okay. So they boycotted. But you see, quickly wrap up from critically, the and look, the up. allegation that EC so sourced is not true. And it was also true that they started the process of procurement this year. They actually started in August 2019. Oh, and by, that is by, even in itself in the money uh, uh, press statement that you by, by which time they had done consultations already? But you see, what, <laughs> as far back as April, mm. Were you not aware that the EC had plans of conducting a new voters register? But they, they no, told I'm us asking that they you. Were, but they told us that they were consulting and people. And you are telling me that How between that time... And consult? No, but what is the role of IPAC? The NDC said, to the hearing of all of us, that because the conversation on the new voters register was not an agenda item. Mm. I'm sure you are aware of how corporate governance is. Mm. And that at every meeting... There is room for subject matter items that have not been listed to be discussed. It will be. Thank you very much. But it, and, it, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't don't, don't be deceived though by no, the no, talk no, 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 that you, if an agenda item mm -hmm. is discussed in AOB and the decision is taken on it, it's not binding. Okay. Is that what they are telling us? No, you tell me. No, is that what they, they are telling us? You tell me. So you see, there is some position that the NDC have taken that I think is unfortunate. Because I would have thought that rather than objecting to 
the compilation of the new road tax register, when the EC has told all of us, mm. including the special budget committee where you had representation, but, but my question and is, your members did not object to the process but, but my, as was being recommended, but, but my question we would have put our energies together to support the electoral commission to conduct a successful voter but, registration. But, it, it In any appear, event, it does see, appear. No, hold Tony, hold I'm coming. Hold please, hold please, please, please. Very well. It does appear that the electoral commission had already taken a decision to compile before it kick-started the consultations. But because how else were you expecting them to do it? How else? They manage the election. So what was the essence of the consultation? Or is it the MPP that manages the election? What was the essence of the consultation? But of course, we take a decision that, look, we think that this is how the 2020 election process ought to go. Okay. Then we discuss it at IPAC. Okay. Is that not how it was done? Let, let me say, Sir Bethia, come in. Chief, is, is there... I was going to say... Is there a hidden that agenda? In Chief, 2000, you no, before you, you, before you, inter, you, inter, so, you intervene... Sorry, you know, I'll give you it's another important. I'll give you another... I, no, let me just conclude. Okay. Alex said here that in 2012, mm. we had problems, so the election had to be run over two days. Why? Who tells him that in 2016 we didn't run the election over two days? Have you seen the CI? Mm. That the electoral commissioner published declaring the election results. Okay. It says in there that following the 7th and 8th December general election, and I'll pull it for you now. Okay, thank you. So what are we talking point about? I well hear made. them say that the point is well EC made. has gathered experience. Why do they use the same personnel to conduct the election from 2012 all the way to thank, 2016? Thank you very Please. much. Please. Chief, is there, is there a hidden agenda that we don't know about? Let me deal with the last point you raised okay. before I get the extension of time. Mm had to do with machines not working in certain areas. So people couldn't vote on the day. They had to stop the process, mm. get new batteries, get new machines, send, and then they had so whole uh, constituencies or uh, polling, polling stations issues. had to now be re-equipped with um, equipment. And then they had to vote the following day. There so it is not like it was a continuous voting period okay. and you are asking for time or people finish. No. So there were also instances where people didn't get their materials in good Lots time, of things. So. so I think that dealing with that point is, is a non-point. Okay. Uh, let me put it that way. Secondly, was it not President Akufuado who came and told us that he had signed a document but he had been misled in Ameri? So... It was a President mistake. Has never said so. Or that he was allow, allow him, please. He's allow, never. Allow him, allow him to make his point. That Some people he, will leave there. Please, uh, no, please, set. please can, note your... Oh, please. Some people will stop watching us. Please note your oh. point of disagreement. <laughs> you, you made statements that I don't agree with. If you don't agree with no. mine... <laughs> Chief, Chief, make we, 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 we allow, We've heard that there were uh, statements made by the President indicating that... He had either not been given enough information or he had been misled. And he is the one who has actually said it or put out a statement to that, mm. to that effect. And the only point I'm making is that even presidents get it wrong sometimes. How much more a committee in parliament? In any event, without admitting, I don't take totally what he says about how that committee issue was dealt with. Mm. But he's read a section and we don't have all. But it's a red herring. Why is it a red herring? You have a situation where people are dealing with factual and giving detail mm -hmm. as to processes, procedures, and what is required. Do we have a, a case? Yes. This is register. It's not a 2012 register. Mm -hmm. That's the first point you must get right. It's a 2016 register. And even worse, better. It's a 2019 register. Mm -hmm. Because we've had a limited registration exercise. Okay, preceding, the preceding that, before we went for the limited registration. So it's not a, tr it's origins is 2012. But its current form is a 2019 register. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole idea of a register, which you do not want to be repetitive every time because of the cost, mm -hmm. which they raised when they were in opposition. So we are simply saying, look, you have this position. Mm -hmm. What is it that concerns you? What concerns us is that when you did your last limited registration, you, the EC, we, people in our strongholds, mm -hmm. were disenfranchised. Clearly. The you, type you of think, machines that were sent... deliberate? We are clearly deliberate. You can go and check the kind of equipment. We told them already from day one that the machines you wanted to use cannot be used for a mass registration because... They are meant for a, uh, 
one of two people every day, that sort of thing. You cannot do them at the district. You decided to ignore our advice and decided not to put them in most polling stations or electoral areas to go and do them in districts. People have to travel over 70 miles. And when they get there, the equipment is not working. So you are expecting them to stay, stay overnight. They have made no provision for that. They go back home. They never come and register. You get that the machine is not working. Those that were supposed to use the, uh, uh, the, the internet uh, facilities, how many did they send to Eastern Region? As com the data is there as compared to what was sent to the Volta Region. So there was a clear, deliberate attempt to disenfranchise our people. We lost days just because of material and equipment. It didn't happen in Eastern Region. We can, and the facts are there for all to see. So we have a concern. The, the, we, the Ascension region is supposed to be the strongest hold well, of the we, I, I didn't. I'm not even going there. But the, if you want, you wanted to know our concerns, right. these are our concerns. Our people were disenfranchised. So we do not know why we need a new limited registration exercise. And this is not something, <laughs> we are not saying this for the first time. We've said it time and time again in press conferences that a limited registration uh, uh, from the limited registration exercise mm. we know that people will be disenfranchised the only reason why it didn't become an issue was that it was hard to do with a referendum first and foremost mm. which nobody was against new regions being formed so whether you disenfranchise people or not is fine we also saw the kind of things that happen in terms of the voting mm. at the during the uh, what's it called the referendum Scandalous. The EC says was it was a perfect one. Well, free, fair, and that even concerns us more. Why? Because if they had come out and said, "Look, we had challenges in certain areas. We did our best. It would have been more appropriate." Mm. Because we had international observers, we had uh, what's it called internal observers, Ideal. and none none of them said that this was a good. Uh, what the events that happened was was something that we should even be proud about. It was clear that they were. It was a shambles. So when you look at the history, and then you come now and say you want to form a new register, we will say, okay, tell us why. Because we know that doing a registration is going to be more difficult nationwide than even the limited registration you had to and do. so far, you have not been told. Every reason that has been given has been challenged, and there has been no clear uh, decision. We don't have the time. It is out there. But bottom line... Mm -hmm. All the negative issues that have been put out, listen, let me now become a patriot and take my uh, uh, political cap, cap off. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, when the manufacturers themselves tell you that they need three months from the date of signing before the equipment can come, and we are in March, midway, and you look at it, the earliest we are going to get this equipment, assuming all factors are equal, is June, July. Because we have not signed the deal now, have we? I'm not, I don't know whether it's been signed or not. Okay. <laughs> I but, pack but, it's they, but you said April. It is clear that the April date that was given by the EC is a non-starter. The, the date the given was 18th of April. By, by the way. 18th of April was the date given. Why are we fudging facts? This is the fact. It will not be ready by the 18th of April. How do you know that? Because the manufacturers have said in their document that they need three months from the date of signing. Even if they signed it in February, they cannot get it here by 18th of April. What about this issue of coronavirus? <laughs> what about it? Are we just going to pretend that it's not happening? People are stockpiling. Businesses are closing. Shipments cannot go. The whole world is in crisis. We are just pretending as if, because it's not with us, and th thank God we don't want it either, that we are an island and we are the ones who are manufacturing the equipment or what. It's coming from somewhere. Would they not be affected? Shipping lanes closed. Okay. We are simply saying it is, there isn't enough time and you will get us into a mess. The procurement issues and whatnot can be dealt with subsequently. What would the when the new lose? government comes, we what, will look at it what and the, look at what has gone what on. What would the NDC lose if a new register is compiled? The fact that our people will be disenfranchised. What do you mean? We, will, what, what, we saw it at the limited registration. <laughs> Okay. It's an attempt to disenfranchise our I people. Putting pass okay. people in, Look, so you, you claim they were disenfranchised. Step in for me, uh, clo closing thoughts. <laughs> well, I think, I think uh, uh, the, your question uh, has been answered, yes? Yes, I think the question is being answered. And yeah. so this whole issue of uh, the, the, the machines are obsolete, they are not, and all this, it boils down to, I mean, uh, uh, 
whether people are going to be disenfranchised or not. Mm. And I listened to uh, Mr. Sebafia. I think uh, the, the main reason why the NDC as a political party is, is very worried is that it feels that its members are not going to be given a fair opportunity to register. Mm. Johnny, I, I, I hope that uh, every Ghanaian is given the opportunity to register and the opportunity to vote. But as I said mm. at the beginning, we are not in normal times. And we are not in normal times because, as I said, this various thing that we are even talking of, we don't know how it's going to affect registration. And I would want the Electoral Commission should be mi to be mindful of that and to factor that in all activities that uh, it plans uh, towards uh, the elections. But at the end of the day, uh, we, we just have to pray that uh, it doesn't get here. Okay. But as uh, you are aware, Ghana is not an island. Right. <laughs> it's <laughs> not an island. Today, we are told Burkina Faso, which is our immediate border, has been affected. In fact, yesterday, the, the health minister in Burkina Faso says we should dismiss that notion that blacks cannot contract it ah, well. because the couple who contracted it were Our born blacks. and bred there in their pure breed. So yeah. we should Togo, dismiss Togo, that. Togo has also been affected. Right. Nigeria Cote have, well. have ha uh, so so definitely we should be bracing for it. And a country of our type where we are not very, very self sufficient, it can it can it can derail most of our, our plans. Mm. So I think the conversation should move towards how do we collectively come together to see to how, because we cannot, mm -hmm. as a country, say that we'll not run elections in December 7. <laughs> we can't think of it. I mean, can you think of Ghana saying that December 7th election is being postponed? It's not possible. So let's look at how we can come up with uh, pragmatic, uh, I mean, answers in dealing with these issues, especially okay. uh, looking at where we, are, where we are now. Okay. The page five of the, um, the final newspaper says, calls for immediate fuel price reductions misplaced premature Hassan Tampoli and the chief executive officer of the National Petroleum Authority Alaji Hassan Tampoli has dismissed calls by members of the largest opposition party on government to as a matter of agency reduce fuel prices to reflect occurrences on the international market speaking in an interview with the press yesterday Alassane Tampoli says since July 1 2015 uh, we have moved from time from the time where government would intervene <coughs> in the prices of petroleum products to a time where the determination is made by the oil marketing companies. The key indicators being the forex rate, um, the uh, FOB price, the international price, and taxes, levies, and margins. But, but, but the word on the street is that when the prices increase, we are quick to increase it. But that's not true. But when it decreases, <laughs> we say we are waiting for a window. No, Johnny, that's not true. And you, 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 you are very much aware mm. of the mechanism that has been put in place, and rightfully so, mm. since 2000. And 15, which is some two week cycle uh, based on which the average prices on okay. the world market mm. uh, vis a vis the exchange rate, mm. okay, uh, then, then is used to set some parameters for OMCs to uh, determine their price. Mm. That system has not changed. Uh, and so uh, makes you wonder what really it is that our friends in the NDC all of a sudden mm. are saying that, hey, even though the system that we, we put in place, which is not broken, mm. fix it. Copec is making because, that call too. No, of course. The, I expect that I also go to the pumps. Right. I buy fuel. Mm. I'm not giving coupons. Oh. MPs are not giving coupons. You don't I, get coupons? No. At all. I buy fuel. Not even from your colleagues on, in on government. On the regular. Not even from your colleagues no. in government. You don't get coupons. So, you see, I also get impacted okay. by... But of course, if somebody graciously gives you, you continue. Nobody a coupon every night. You, then, so you are giggling. It's important that I. Respond. No, I just smile. No. <laughs> uh, and and of course, I don't get coupon, and that's a, that's the only. Officially, you don't. Officially, get coupon. Yeah, I don't. But yes, people I'm not get saying you coupons. Yeah. Oh well, I mean, I cannot say that nobody has given me a coupon before. Okay. Somebody has, but it's not very infrequently. Okay. You know. Okay. So I expect that when the next cycle hmm. occurs. The prices would reflect what is prevailing on the international market. Okay. But you see, yesterday I was shocked. Why were you? When I heard a comment from a colleague NDC MP, I won't mention his name, excited about the fact that the prices of fuel 
was dropping on the international market because it was going to impact government revenues. Oh, I was shocked. I yeah. That government is not going to generate the revenue from oil mm. to fund our development projects. I was amazed. Ghanaian, member of parliament, mm. excited that oil prices are dipping because and, and so government will suffer. It's food for thought. Mm. Uh, okay, okay. But, but, but Bobo, you're selling Forex ahead. You have a 40 member committee in place to look at the FX development and all of that. You should not be altogether worried about somebody's comment. Ah, but haven't you heard them say that the stabilization of the cities mm. as a result of the coronavirus and that is artificial? Mm. Haven't you heard them say it? They've said it. You've heard them? Mm. You disagree? You see, of course, there are several factors that influence. Uh, <coughs> exchange rate mm. part. And I guess that the rationale for setting up the committee was to find out what it is that actually underpins those factors. Okay. <coughs> Kicking in at every time. Because yesterday, I was speaking to somebody who told me that uh, there's been some back and forth movement of the dollar in the past two days, mm. even though mm. it's been mm. stabilized for the past week and a half or so. You know, so I, I think that the committee is doing a very useful job. Uh, of course, the persons who sought to play mischief with it initially, I'm sure they themselves appreciate the importance. At, at of what cost? Someone getting, will ask. Getting well, at the cost of understanding the underpinnings, so that we can develop policy to address it. Because okay. long-term mm. ability to fix some of these short-term problems, okay, is the way to go. Okay. And I expect that as we develop our industrialization program, as we evolve with the program of import substitution, mm. okay, as we increase our exports, uh, some of the factors that impact our exchange okay. rate movement would, would, your, would be... Would Mr. Tampoli says that uh, your, the cause by your party to uh, have the fuel reduced, the prices reduced, is premature, misplaced, and is aimed at scoring cheap political points. And that by the next pricing window, you will see about 15%. You're asking for 20%. Anything short of that should be rejected by Ghanaians. COPEC says between 10 and 32%. But the government says 15% is what you're likely to get. Are you scoring cheap political points? Uh, we wanted to know whether there was going to be a reduction. We thought that somebody should have been saying something by now. Okay. If what people hadn't come out to ask the question, <laughs> when were we going to know? Were we going to wait for this window? And then all of a sudden it sprang upon us that, oh, no, actually, we are going to give you 10% instead of 15%. We have done our calculations and say we expect it to be 20%. Okay. Now he's saying 15%. But so you the first call is that he accepts that there has to be a reduction. No matter what calculation you do, there should be a reduction based on that the drop in the price of oil. There has to be a reduction. Are you based on the that you so, so go along, yes. Are you satisfied with the fifteen percent? I can I I'm, I cannot comment on that at this stage. Okay. I'm not. I don't have the figures. Or I haven't looked at mm. the, this thing. But you were me, worried about the two percent that we were. I getting. was worried about the fact that nobody was talking of a reduction. Okay. Period. Now they accept that. And the whole, when you listen to the, uh, the, the position, it was like, we are asking for a reduction. Government doesn't do reduction, so we shouldn't be talking about it to government. The point is, Ghanaians want to know whether we're going to get a reduction. Then after that, we want to know whether, how much that reduction is going to be. Mm. We've got answer to one, as far as I'm concerned. The answer is that we are going to have a reduction. So, thank you. Second point, mm. how much is that reduction going to be? Because... When you come out with your figures, mm -hmm. then we will look at all the, the issues that come in. Okay. But you cannot have a drop from 60 something uh, dollars uh, a, a barrel wow. to, to mm. uh, 38, I think it is, mm. at this point, and say that it is such a drop will not affect the price. Even to a common person, lay person who hasn't got any statistical, it, it, it was, except on that, on that. And if you talk about exchange rates, <laughs> if your fundamentals <laughs> are weak, <laughs> the exchange rate will expose you. These are not my words; they are the words of uh, our vice president mm -hmm. on behalf of his president. So 
don't talk, tell us about exchange rate differentials. It is their promises that is disturbing them. Really? Yes. Because if you come and tell the whole world that somebody is so incompetent, cannot do anything, and everything is all this and that, look, to make a statement that the money is in Ghana, we will not borrow. There is no need for borrowing. The money is in Ghana, and we are, and then come and do the, the greatest amount of borrowing this country has ever seen. Don't talk to me about your economic policies because all your money is you are, you are doing your economic policies is borrowed money. If we had borrowed that money, we could have done three times what you did. Okay. So uh, it is just is their promises mm. that have, have come to come and haunt them. They, it's not anything. Mr. Tampoli says you know the formula. You know that there are windows, and yet you are you are asking them to jump the gun. But he himself has jumped the gun. Didn't he say there will be a reduction? <laughs> Why didn't he just say I, I'm not ready to answer? This is not a matter for you, and keep quiet. He's jumped the gun. Uh, uh, isn't that the point? The point that's why I said it's twofold. One is, is there going to be a reduction? Mm. And you cannot have this drop, so great a drop, and expect the ordinary person, you know, this, they are from, yes, the ordinary person in the street is saying, ah, there's this drop. Where's, so come out and, uh, you know, sometimes you have to be proactive. Mm. Oh, there has been a, a, this thing, at the next this thing, we are <laughs> looking at how that is going to affect, even if you don't want to say there will be a reduction, how that is going to affect. That's what we are saying. Okay. And now at least it has come out. Okay. And he's even saying it is going to be around 50%. He's also jumped the gun. Doc, ordinary Ghanaian view. John, I'm a little bit is, confused. This is good news for you. <laughs> well, I'm confused in the sense that when you read the story about Tampul, he said he couldn't, uh, uh, he couldn't speak to it because there's a formula that determines right. it. Okay. And so he didn't mention the 15%. He did. He mentioned yeah, so I'm surprised. He, he, how yeah. did he arrive at the 15%? It's, but it's 15%. That's, that's notwithstanding. Uh, uh, Johnny, Ghana yeah. is an ex uh, oil exporting country. Right. And when there's a drop in the price of crude oil, it definitely affects our revenue. Right. And it's be refreshing as uh, a, a, a client of, uh, I mean, buying somebody who buys fuel, that I go to the pump and there's a reduction in the price of fuel. But I think there's something bigger than that. What is it? What it means is that the effects, I don't know what is the cause of all this reduction in the price of uh, crude, but I'm tempted to believe There's that. Some price war that is. The, the, whatever yes, it is. Yes. Whatever Between it is. Russia and uh, what? Saudis. Saudis, Saudis and stuff like that. But, yeah. but what it also tells you that as a country, we are losing money. We are losing course, revenue, yeah. and we need to be concerned. Whilst we jubilate over uh, a reduction in price at the pump, we also have to be mindful of the fact that look, the money that we'll get to do most of these infrastructure projects, uh, we are losing. Thank you very much. Dr. Ahmed Jinapo is, the, is a senior lecturer with the University of Education in Winnebar. He's been my guest here. And also Mr. Alex Segbefia. He is a head of research at the NDC. He's also a former minister and a former uh, chief of staff. Relations. International relations, sorry and about deputy that. deputy chief of staff. And deputy chief of staff, sorry. <laughs> deputy, <laughs> former, deputy chief of former deputy chief of former staff. Former oh, deputy okay. chief of deputy staff. Deputy defense. And, uh, and, uh, and also, <laughs> may, uh, Honorable Andrew Ejapa uh, Mesa. That's my first uh, time of encountering him. I've enjoy, really enjoyed it. You've him. enjoyed him. <laughs> we were trying to heckle him. Oh, no, 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 he's a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed for coming. <laughs>